I'm Catherine Renshaw, the Labor candidate for North Sydney. We're here in Willoughby, the heart of the electorate. We've just had an amazing conversation with local mums, dads and carers about early childhood, early childhood education, some of the stresses and costs of living on parents trying to raise families these days. It's been an amazing conversation. Fantastic to have Georgie Dent with me, Amanda Richworth and Anthony Albanese. So Georgie. Yeah, thank you very much, Catherine. My name's Georgie Dent. I am the Executive Director of The Parenthood and I am absolutely thrilled that um, The Parenthood was able to bring a group of parents and carers to sit around a table and talk directly to Anthony Albanese, Amanda Rishworth and Catherine Renshaw. Uh, the conversation today focused primarily on the need for parents and families to be supported. We know that the cost of early childhood education and care is crippling for families. Aside from housing, it is usually the biggest source of financial pain. We know that the out-of-pocket cost for early childhood education and care is up 15% since the May 2019 election. That means when you put that against a background of stagnant wage growth um, and soaring cost of living, it means for lots of families they are effectively in real terms going backwards. Making early childhood education and care radically more affordable and accessible is the smartest economic and social reform we can pursue. Um, and I'm incredibly grateful that when we extended an invitation to Anthony Albanese to sit with some of our members and talk through these issues directly with families, they were willing to do so. Um, and I'm really heartened by that commitment. Um, today's conversation was honest and raw and real because these issues are, are personal and real and hard. And Personally, as an organisation um, that's committed to making Australia the best place in the world to be a parent, I think today's conversation was incredibly valuable and I'm really grateful for the opportunity for our members um, to have this conversation today. Thank you. Well, thank you uh, so much, Georgie, and thanks to Catherine Renshaw. It's good to be back in the electorate of North Sydney as the Labor leader uh, for the second time during this campaign. It's great to be with Amanda Rishworth, our amazing uh, Early, early learning, childhood, uh, childcare spokesperson has done such a fantastic job. Our childcare policy is the most significant on budget commitment that we have made during this campaign. And we made it in my first budget reply because it was obvious uh, what the needs were. And advocacy groups like the Parenthood have played a critical role in that. And I thank Georgie uh, for uh, her advocacy uh, for her strength and for her, her energy in just driving this. Today we've heard from parents who've travelled, uh, not just from Sydney, from Adelaide and Brisbane, right around the country, a diverse group of parents, all, th all though with a common theme, which is that government needs to do better. We need to do better on the issue of, of uh, looking after our youngest Australians. And this, of course, is not welfare. It's really important. This is about economic reform. This is economic reform that will drive productivity, that will drive workforce participation, uh, particularly economic participation for women, as well as being good for children. There's been some research done by the Grattan Institute that shows that our plan for cheaper childcare will increase the hours worked by secondary earners with young children by 8%. Now, what does that represent? That represents unlocking an additional 220 thousand days of work a week for second income earners who we know are predominantly women. That is the equivalent of putting 44,000 additional people into the workforce. 44,000. Think of that productivity boost that comes with that. That is why uh, this is so important. And uh, before uh, I ask uh, Amanda to make some comments as well, I do want to make some comments about uh, the issue of wages. I note that Scott Morrison is once again being loose with the truth. What we're talking about here is the uh, lowest paid workers in Australia. Those people who are really struggling with cost of living increases. And what Scott Morrison says is that it's okay to find $30 million for a block of land uh, that's worth $3 million. It's okay, his government can always find uh, money for, uh, for sports rorts, for commuter car park rorts, for all of this activity. But 
uh, he's okay to waste those billions of dollars, a billion dollars, literally, on advertising of the government itself. But backing a $1 an hour pay increase is not okay. Workers who are paid $20.33 an hour to be paid $1 extra. That is what this debate uh, is about. Scott Morrison has had a conscious decision over the last decade of driving down wages. They say it's a key feature of their economic architecture and they have indeed uh, achieved that. Uh, I'd ask Amanda to make some comments. Well, thank you very much, Anthony, and it's wonderful to be here with Georgie, who's been an amazing advocate, and to listen to all those stories around the tables, stories of parents uh, and some of the things that governments can do better to help them be the best parents they can be. Uh, and it was wonderful to speak with parents here, but these are the same conversations I'm actually having right around the country, that childcare is just too expensive. One of the uh, parents that we heard from today summed it up perfectly. They said, sometimes going back to work feels like an expensive hobby. And that is because childcare is just too expensive. That's why Labor has a comprehensive plan to make childcare cheaper in this country. Uh, a plan that will make 96% of families better off as a result. But the research that Anthony mentioned before, research done by the Grattan Institute, also demonstrates that this policy, in addition to supporting people with the cost of living, is also about economic growth. This is a economic policy which will allow more women, particularly, to return to the workforce, to actually grow our economy. We know businesses out there now want skilled workers. Well, there are workers at home uh, and the barrier to going and working more hours is that cost of childcare. 44,000 equivalent full-time jobs is what our policy will unleash. And the economic growth that Grattan points to means that our policy is equal to a $10 billion infrastructure project. This is infrastructure for families that Labor's investing. And it is backed up by our commitment to an early years strategy that will look across the Commonwealth at all the programs and make sure our programs for children in the early years is working together. It's backed up by our commitment to other supports such as playgroups and toy libraries. It's only the Labor Party in this election that is putting families front and centre focused on the cost of living, but importantly looking at policies that deliver economic growth. The independent analysis is in. This delivers for our whole community, but also for our whole economy. It's good policy and it should be backed in. Mr Albanese, Mr Albanese, Mr Albanese. Mr. Albanese. Mr. Albanese. Mr. Albanese. Mr. When, when you're finished, I'll give someone the call. When you're finished, I'll give someone the call. Mr Albanese, next year, if inflation rises by 7%, would you advocate for a wage hike of 7%? What we're talking about here is a circumstance whereby uh, people have been going backwards. During this campaign, uh, we have made it very clear that people are being left behind under, on this government's watch, that the cost of everything is going up. The cost of everything is going up, but people's wages aren't. Just to clarify, Mr. Albanese, just to clarify. 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 Will your submission to the Fair Work Commission... I'll be pardon? Will, in government, will your submission to the Fair Work Commission recommend a 5.1% wage increase? And if not, have you jumped the gun on this? No, not at all. We've been running... We won't, because we, why not? No. We have been running a campaign every day of this campaign about cost of living. And one of the themes of our campaign, including at the campaign launch, was no one left behind. What we're talking about here is the circumstances right now where people are doing it really tough. They're on $20.33 an hour. $20.33 an hour. Those people will not benefit from any of the tax cuts that will come in. They're on $20.33 an hour. The cost of everything that they buy is going up, but their wages aren't. Scott Morrison, Scott Morrison says that that's okay. And when I raised, when I raised in the debate on Channel Nine on Sunday night, 
I got two questions to the Prime Minister I prioritise. The issue of should Australians be paid at least the minimum wage? He couldn't even agree to that. While we're on Channel 9. Just increasing the minimum wage by 5.1%. Do you accept, though, that there are broader implications with that, that it applies to not just those earning lowest wages in this country, but also those on EBAs? It applies to penalty rates. And could wind up costing employers a whole lot more? Enterprise bargaining agreements, of course, are separate from the minimum wage. There are linkages. There are there are linkages. There are linkages. We, we do not have centralised wage fixation in this country. What we have is a series of uh, uh, wage cases, including the minimum wage case, which is uh, underway at the moment. You say, you say that you don't want people going backwards. Would you say that you want? wages to be pinned to CPI? What I want, what I want, when I was asked, uh, would, I, would I welcome a, a, a wages for minimum wages keeping up with the cost of living? I answered, I answered yes, because I would, because that is what we've been arguing on. Uh, we have ads on the TV at the moment talking about this. We've had them throughout the campaign. And you know what I find astonishing? I find it astonishing that a Prime Minister who is, who is presiding over a circumstance whereby punters who go up to the local shops here are paying extra for their meat and veggie, veggies, they're paying extra for their petrol, they're paying extra for their childcare, they're paying extra for all the costs of living, all the costs of living, but those people on the minimum wage, what we're talking about here, who are we talking about? We're talking about cleaners. We're talking about retail workers. We're talking about people really struggling to get by. It's, it's not enough. It is not enough to say, it is not enough to say, thank you for what you did getting us through the pandemic and then say, we want to cut. We want to cut your real wage. That is what, that is what Scott Morrison is saying. <laughs> that it was nonsense that a wage hike to the minimum wage to 5.1% would be inflationary or drive up interest rates. How can you make that promise given interest rates are set by the RBA? No. And can you guarantee that homeowners across Australia will not be paying yeah. more on their mortgage? The, the Reserve Bank have been saying for a long period of time that one of the handbrakes on our economy has been wages. The Reserve Bank Governor has been talking about this for just about every major speech that he has been giving for a long period of time. And, and, and my comments are perfectly consistent with that. Mr. 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 In the last election, in the last election oh, Labor yeah. in the last election Labor made a virtue of the fact that you announced your final costings earlier in the campaign, didn't keep it to the last minute. This time you appear to be doing the opposite. Isn't that taking voters, treating voters like mugs, no, no, no detail until the very end of the campaign when a lot of people probably don't have time to think it through? No, we, we are. We will announce uh, all of our costings in the usual way, like oppositions always but have. Mr. Last time you criticised, Mr. Albanese, Mr. Albanese, last time you criticised the government for leaving it too late. Did I? Labor did, yes. Did I? Labor did. You won't answer the question? Well, I, I've answered the question. We'll, we'll release our costings in the usual way, as oppositions have. On the detail of the Fair Work Commission process, you still have time to put in a submission. You said um, yesterday Labor would be doing that. Well, I, I, th I think Fair Work Commission are probably clear about what our view is on those issues. No, I haven't, that wasn't yeah, a question. Sorry, I hadn't finished. Um, <laughs> I just want to ask the So you want a second question? No, no, no. I haven't finished the preamble. Um, sorry, <laughs> on the detail, will you put forward explicitly 5.1 in Labor's proposal? Well, if I was doing that, then that would be an announcement. But I think it's very clear. So it's TBC? It, it, no, it's very clear what our view is. And uh, I think the Fair Work Commission have probably heard that. You're backing away from 5.1%. No, I'm... You said yesterday 5.1%. No, I'm not. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. That was your word. Yes, and I stand by that. So is but that going to be... Jen, 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 I, I've answered the question. Yes or no. I've, yes or I, no. I've answered the question. Yes no. it's, it's not a game. I've answered the question. Okay. Jen. Just on the debate, if I can. Thanks. Are you looking forward to it. What can we expect? Do we need a, a wind and a chair? I, 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 I am looking forward to it. 
uh, the last debate was pretty rigorous, it's fair to say. And uh, it, it should, of course, there should be some rigour uh, because we're talking about important issues. It's an opportunity for me tonight to further outline our plan for a better future. Uh, the big issue in this election campaign is cost of living, is cost of living, and whether people are left behind or whether people are held back. But it's about other things as well. It's about a plan for the future. On Sunday night, on Sunday night, uh, the Prime Minister put forward no plan for the present, let alone one for the future. We have plans like uh, child, child care reform uh, that will boost the economy, that will boost productivity. And I want to talk about that tonight. I want to talk about a future made here in Australia. I want to talk about uh, more secure work. I want to talk about addressing the cost of living challenges. I want to talk about the opportunity that's there from acting on climate change. Uh, we need more than just three more years of the same. That is what we need. Mr. 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 Just on the whole wages conversation that sure. we're having right now. Yesterday, the question to you was, do, would you support wage hikes of at least 5.1%? To which you said, absolutely. So is that... Were you saying absolutely well, it wasn't. That, that wasn't what that wasn't that what the was question, question said. Absolutely. No, the question was, uh, it went to you don't want people to go backwards. Does that mean you would support a wage hike of five percent just to keep up with inflation? Oh, my a, so my answer my, an, my my answer was absolutely, and I stand by it. Just on the question Amanda asked before, is it wrong? To, is it wrong to link? Wage rise, minimum wage rises to CPI, and there was a question that you were asked before by one of the the women chatting about about parenthood. Sure. Why won't Labor take adding superannuation to pay parental leave for this election? Uh, because I've said I would like to do that. It's something that would be a positive move. But one of the things we're doing at this election is under promising, so that we over deliver. We we're in a position whereby we have a trillion dollars of debt. So we're not uh, promising to do everything that we would like to do in our first term. And so uh, I've made it clear, it, would that be a good thing? Yes. Uh, are we in a position to promise things uh, that uh, might be difficult to deliver? No. We're being very clear and, and very upfront. And one of the things I've done during this campaign is that I speak about polling day, which we now know is May 21, but I also speak about the next election in three years' time. And I want to be in a position whereby I say, we said we'd deliver cheaper childcare, and it's happening. We said we'd address cost of living, and we're doing that. We said we'd make more things here, and it's happening. We said we'd be addressing climate change, and it's happening. We're seeing that private sector investment in, in renewables. In renewables, and you only get one. Sorry. Well, what, 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 do what, do you, what do you think the rate of inflation will be in a year's time under oh, Labor? That that's a question for economists. The idea that oh, it's a question for Prime no, Minister. No, no. The idea that anyone could predict what the rate of inflation was uh, a year ago uh, now is, of course. Uh, a, a triumph of hope over experience. On Rachel's question, are you saying, yeah. in response to your answer yesterday, are you saying, by that logic, wage increases no, no. should be tied to inflation? No, that's I'm, what you seem to be saying. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that people on the minimum wage right now, right now, and, and I gave a speech last Thursday. I know some of you were at the lunch, but if you go back and have a look at the speech, what it spoke about was productivity as being the key. What it spoke about was bringing unions and business together for common interest to, to work together on that common interest, to grow productivity. The way that you can have wages increase and profits increase whilst not putting inflationary pressure there is productivity growth. And that was the centre of my speech to the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry last Thursday. That's my position. But when I'm asked when people at the moment, when there's no childcare relief, when there's nothing happening on the social wage, when there's nothing happening at all to alleviate people's concerns at a time when, at a time when if the Fair Work Commission, which makes these decisions independently of government, makes that decision that people shouldn't get a real wage cut, would I welcome it? 
Absolutely. But Mr. Albanese, on that, on that, on that logic, you're suggesting that okay, people right now are suffering. They're not seeing their wages increase. If there was an increase of 5.1 percent, you would welcome that. By that logic, if inflation no. goes up to 6 percent no, that's next not, year, that, that, that's that not that by that logic. Situation? Isn't that the same situation? No, we have a circuit. I've just gone through it. And, and I don't think you were there last Thursday, but I encourage you to go read the speech about how you great. I watched it in the office. It was a great speech. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for that endorsement. I'm glad you watched. Uh, but what it spoke about was how you get wage growth and profit growth. It is something that without putting inflationary pressure on. And we did that. This isn't in the absence of uh, debates and discussions I've had with the business community, with the union movement. I've said we'll convene a full employment summit, a full employment summit. And that, uh, part of that agenda will be about how we improve economic growth, how about we improve it in a way that deals with inflationary pressures, which is there, and we get win-wins. It's been possible in the past. The problem for this government is that they don't have uh, plans. Uh, all they have, all they have is, is arguments and criticisms. And at the moment, at the moment we have a circumstance whereby this debate specifically is about whether uh, people who are on far less than anyone in, in this press conference, far less. These are people who are earning $20.33 an hour, whether they should get $1 more. And I'm a, I, I regard this, I'm the Labor leader, but I'm, I'm amazed that this is not a bipartisan issue because this is a government that had been prepared to go back, did a budget just a short while ago, whereby they made changes to petrol, they gave $250 handouts, they did all of this cost of living relief, saying there was a cost of living crisis. Well, there is a cost of living crisis. People are doing it tough and, and that is why there needs to be action. Last one. On that point, the Prime Minister says you're a loose unit and your head flips open and stuff just falls out. What do you say to that? Well, this Prime Minister is loose with the truth. He's loose with the truth about his analysis of his opponents, but he's loose with the truth for those people who've worked closely with him as well. Uh, this is a guy who the Deputy Prime Minister said, the more you get to know him, uh, the less uh, trustworthy and the more he bends uh, the truth. Uh, the fact is that he thinks that, uh, so does the former Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, uh, so do so many, so many people who have worked closely with him. I'll tell you the difference between me, and I'll conclude with this, the difference between me and Scott Morrison is that those people who've worked with me the closest for the longest are my closest friends Absolutely. and strongest supporters. Absolutely. This guy, this guy cuts people loose is what he does, which is why we're here in the electorate of North Sydney, North Sydney, during a federal election campaign, because people who have values, who have traditionally supported the Liberal Party, are walking away from the most divisive Prime Minister in modern history. This is a guy who never looks to bring people together, who never looks for unity, is always just looking for wedges and always looking for division. Australia can be better. I want to bring business and unions together, large businesses and unions. I want to bring small business and their employees together. I want to work with all of the state premiers and chief ministers and bring them together. Australians have conflict fatigue. They've been through two really tough years and we have a Prime Minister who's incapable of doing what's needed to take Australia forward. Thanks very much.